It's round number four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series and the bright lights of Las Vegas serve as the backdrop for the midway point of the season. And the Drivers' Championship is still up for grabs. Will it be Ivan the Iron Man Stewart? He is currently in first place. You've seen Ivan Stewart get tough in the past, but you haven't seen nothing until tonight. I've got the points lead. Las Vegas is my race, and there's nobody taking this race from me tonight. Or will it be Rick Johnson? He's only nine points behind the Iron Man. Listen, Ivan, you may have won here last year, but I'm two for three this year. I'm going for number three. And don't forget what rookie beat you here two years ago. Tonight, Las Vegas is mine. Or will it be the hometown favorite of Rob McCachran? He's within striking distance, only one point out of second place. This is my hometown. This is my track. These are my fans, and no one's going to take this race away from me. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you to round number four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series tonight. We're at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello again, everybody. I'm Marty Reed. Albeit a little breezy atop the stadium, we have got some great racing action for you tonight. As we head to the midway point of the season, no less than seven drivers are within 31 points of the lead in Grand National Sport Truck action. It literally means by the end of the night, you could be in seventh and go all the way to first, depending on what happens. We also have three other classes of racing going on. We'll show you the American Custom Racing Wheel Sport Utilities, the Super 1600s, and the Stadium Superlights. Now, you're asking, where's my partner, Walker? Evans. Well, he's down trackside where the 1991 Grand National Sport Truck Champion will take us around this tough layout at the Las Vegas Silver Bowl. Walker? As we accelerate past the green flag, we want to try to get as much speed as we can leading into the sweeper at the far end of the track. Coming out of that, we've got two big massive jumps to clear and the speed is very, very important. After all, we've got two moguls that are key things. We have to clear them both and land and make a 180 turn. Then we've got big moguls after that. Going into turn three at the far end is very, very critical. The speed is not there. The truck has to accelerate very, very quickly to be able to get over these big, big moguls that are in front of us. The suspension has to work properly. After all, if it doesn't, the truck jumps off this one crooked, lands back over here, and does not put you into this turn, a 180 turn, properly to go back to the start finish line. And if the rough driving officials think you're a little too rough on this track, this is where you'll pay a visit, the Triton penalty box. And there's an official standing on the other side of this box giving you a five second count. You will think it takes eternity for that five seconds to go by. And after that, you'll be back out on this track trying to catch the rest of the group. Well, thanks, Walker. Put the hiking boots on. You know, it's a long way up to the press box, and it's time for you to go back to work. The third member of our crew tonight is Mike Anson. He's going to be patrolling pit lane. Mike? We're in the Ford pits with Jerry Welchel. Now, he's a man you're familiar with. He's won all of the Super 1600 races so far this year, but this week you're driving for Ford. How did that come about? Well, Danny Thompson took over the organization, MTEG, and uh, we're going to try to make it for better racing for the spectators. So when his truck came available, I was the first guy in line, and I took the chance. Now, you'll be racing in Super 1600 as well. You've been going back and forth from team to team, changing uniforms. Uh, are you going to be a tired puppy tonight? Yeah, it's, it's mentally tough and physically tough, but I think I can handle it. I've been training a lot lately on the mountain bike and things, and uh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for a win in the buggy and in the truck. Good luck to you tonight. That's the story from down here in the pits with one of the busiest men who will be here this weekend, Jerry Welchel. Well, thanks, Mike. I think you're going to be pretty busy, too. Stay with us. The racing begins right after this. Take a look at the weather conditions for tonight's action. Uh, high overcast skies, 75 degrees. The humidity, as you might expect in the middle of the desert, 15%. But the winds, they could be the big factor, blowing the dust all over the place, gusting to 40 miles an hour. Time now for heat number one, Grand National Sport Trucks. Eight laps of action. Let's set the starting field for you. Row number one, it'll be all Toyota, Rod Millen and Ivan Stewart. In row number two, Rob McCachran in the Ford, Rick Johnson in a Chevy. Row three, Jimmy Johnson in a Chevrolet, Roger Mears in a Nissan. Then Roger Mears Jr. in another Nissan, and Jerry Welch in the other Ford round out the eight-truck field. We are ready to go. 
with racing action at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Starter Bill Rickey signals the green flag and the race is underway and we head for that all-important turn two. That's the one that they've got to clear to get out in front. We talked about it at the beginning of the show and there it is, making that double jump and getting hard on the binders. Rod Millen, Rob McEachern trying to duck on the inside of Ivan Stewart. Well, he certainly is. McEachern's right up in there. Millen. On the hard 180 degree right hand, three abreast as they come through in second place. Pick a truck. Oh no, and Ivan Stewart goes over. He did make a little mistake. He got two sideways, got bumped, and now it looks like he's got front end steering problems. An upright part of the suspension. Something has happened to that Toyota. And Ivan Stewart is pulling off to the side of the course, and it means that man, Rod Millen, will now have to carry Team Toyota's colors here in heat race number one. Well, he certainly is doing that, though. As I see uh, one of the Nelson Nelson trucks pulling into there, what has happened to McCachran? He was right up in there in the thick of things. So McCachran has dropped back to third place, Rod Millen in first, and boy, look at the front end get high as he comes down into that left-hand turn, the last one coming onto the front straightaway, here into the fast sweeper. There's Rick Johnson, then in third place, there is Rob McCachran. Track conditions look ideal. Look at the traction they're getting coming through this little half-mile sweeper turn here. Well, and we always expect it to be very dry at this track. Well, we certainly did. It's usually been that way after all that hot desert sun beating down. But I'll tell you, the track crews have really worked to keep the moisture in this track. On board with Rod Millen. You see the pounding that he takes. Hold on to your lunch because we're going to take out the front now. And up over the jumps, right past the finish line, down into turn one. Take us, Walker. And I'm telling you, he's running 45, maybe 50 miles an hour through there. That Toyota is working great. Heading for that all-important double. Look at the way Rod Millen clears it. Second place is still Rick Johnson. Third is Rob McEachern. Back on board with Rod Millen. This is turn number three. Hard, 180 degree to the right. And boy, it is so tight there. It certainly is, but you can even feel the acceleration. A lot of torque coming out of this Toyota power plant on the front straightaway one more time. And the battle for second is tightening up. Rob McCachran closing in on Rick Johnson. It's one thing to close in, Walker. It's another thing to be able to pass him. Well, it certainly is. But, you know, like Rod said, this is his track, his hometown. He's got to put on a great show here. He clears that, too. That all-important double jump that we talked about. So critical to your lap time being successful here at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. And again, Rick Johnson able to open up a little more distance on the internal sections of this racetrack. I know the split times here doesn't show McCachron pulling up on him, so it looks like he's just, they're holding their own about right now. Rod Millen, lockstep in front of Rick Johnson. There's Rob McCachron. Jimmy Johnson will tell you is in fourth place at this point on the race course. Back on board with Rod Millen. Up over the jump. Watch the suspension. Oh, he got a little sideways there, and so did Rick Johnson behind him. Well, that's all the way you attack these forces. If that truck doesn't run straight up them, it's going to come off of them a little bit sideways. Critical point of timing. Get a little too aggressive, you can find yourself on your nose. Pass the start-finish line one more time. Little touch of flame out the side of the Toyota. Nothing to worry about? Well, no, it's a little bit of uh, probably leftover uh, gases in the pipe, and then it reignited. Well, look at the Rob McCaffrey getting a little sideways as he came out of turn number one, heading for two. And boy, now, Rick Johnson, you get an idea just how critical that little side action was to losing ground for Rob McCaffrey. Well, it did. It put him back a little bit further, didn't it? Rod Millen working his way around turn number four one more time, and the white flag is out. I'll tell you right now, the best thing about what Rob's got going for him right now is he gets to drive his own race. Nobody in front of him, nobody throwing mud at him. He is driving the part of the track that he wants to be on. And again, he makes the double. There's Rick Johnson in second place. Rob McCachron, a distant third. It looks like that's the way it's going to finish here in heat race number one at round number four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Rod Millen, he won the last time out at round number three in Seattle. It's an all-important victory, and here he's going to take heat race number one, the checker flag for Rod Millen and Team Toyota. Second place, tightening up just a bit, but it will be Rick Johnson in the Chevy and then the Ford of Rob McCachron as that's the way they'll finish. One, two, and three. Back after this. Walker Evans and Mike Anson back with you at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. And let's go back to Ivan's crash, Walker. 
Well, he looks like he winds up the meat in between a sandwich between a Ford and a Chevrolet there. Well, we find out from Mike Anson that he's got an injured wrist. Mike, what's the story? How's, how, how's the hand, Ivan? Just, I just sprained it real bad, Mike. I think it just jammed the steering wheel. Come down real hard. It hit real hard, so uh, tore the truck up. But I think we just lost some brakes, blew a tire out, and something with the steering is broken, but we'll be all right. Okay, the PPI guys can do it for you? I'll guarantee it. All right, we'll see you out there. All right, Mike, thank you. So while Ivan and Team Toyota get ready for heat race number two, we'll show you highlights from heat race action in the American Racing Custom Wheels Sport Utility. And you basically could sum up this heat race in two words, Tommy Croft. His Jeep was dominant from the drop of the green flag. He literally just pulled away from this entire field, led it from wire to wire. And finishing second behind him would be T.J. Clark and Jack Millard, but those two would be well behind. That then sets up the showdown. Time now for the main event, the American Racing Custom Wheel Sport Utility. Let's set the starting field for you. On the pole, Tommy Croft. He is the points leader alongside T.J. Clark. In row two, it'll be Jack Millard and Robert Gayton. Ken Hodgden and Joe Achondo in row number three. And rounding out the eight-vehicle field, Brad Person and Christopher Neal. So we are ready to go racing in the main event of the American Racing Custom Wheel Sport Utility. Starter Bill Rickey looks over the field. When he waves the green flag, the pedal goes down, and we're underway. Tommy Croft wears the number one after winning the championship. He had a seven-race streak going that was finally snapped this season. Right now, it is Tommy Croft and Robert Gayton. Gayton coming on strong. Gayton, uh, who has won one main event earlier this year, back at uh, San Diego. He had a horrible qualifying, uh, Walker. When he got started today, I mean, he had a crash and broke some parts. I mean, he, here he is in second place. Well, he is, certainly is coming on right now. He's showing him that uh, he's got her up and running good. I mean, he made the double-double, and that just moved him right by a couple. And now we've got a rollover. Back in turn number one, T.J. Clark gets tangled up in that. There you see T.J. finally getting back underway. Also messed up in that was uh, Christopher Neal. They end up uh, at the back of the pack. Now there is Robert Gayton in front of Jack Miller. Now, Miller trying to work his way inside. He's done a fine job. Oh, Gayton gets a little sideways, opens the door for Miller. Miller on the inside as they head for turn number four. Miller will have the advantage. Oh, but Gayton slams it, slams the door shut on him, and takes over second place again. Gayton says, I'll have none of this, and he just stayed on the gas and made it work for himself. Gayton from Albuquerque, 33 years old. He's driving a Mazda. back to Anaheim as you were watching Tommy Croft. He won there, but then it was Robert Gayton winning at San Diego, snapping the streak, and T.J. Clark winning at Seattle. So right now, Tommy Croft looking to get back into victory lane, and Gayton is closing on him. What do you think's going on? Well, I'll tell you, Gayton's on the gas, his car's working, and uh, Tommy Croft better look out. He's going to have himself a race right now. Four laps remaining, and Gayton is right up on his back doorstep. Now, there are no mirrors on these cars. Oh, no, Gayton with a tremendous end Turn left, Gayton. <laughs> Way to go, coach. <laughs> Good Lord. And that, he doesn't even lose a position, folks. Let's go back and take a look at this, Walker. Take us through it. Well, the Gaten just came off of there just a little bit too eager. And I'll tell you, he didn't quite get across the bump. The bumper caught and a complete endo. The front end bouncing back up. Gaten still trying to gather his bearings here. Tommy Croft looks like he's going to get back on the winning track. The Tomahawk. He'll pick up his second victory of the season. Season. And as far as the all-time leadership, he will it will be his 15th. He is number one in American Racing Wheel Sport Utility. The second place is held by Jeff Elrod and Larry Knoll. They each have 12. So here comes the 15th checkered flag in Sport Utility competition for that man, Tommy Croft, and his second of 1994. And here comes Robert Gate. He's going to finish second. Great comeback after that endo. And Jack Miller will finish third.
stay with us. More after number four, the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Today, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. I'm Marty Reed along with Walker Evans. Mike Anson is pit side, and we're going to show you highlight action now from heat race number two, held just a little bit earlier in super light competition. And Walker, this race boiled down to two of our top competitors, Joe Price in the number four and Mercedes Gonzalez in the number ten. Well, it certainly does. Mercedes has come close a lot of times, but it just seems to elude her, gets away from her. Uh, this time, she put a move on Joe Price and made it stick. Let's see it happen. Now, these are very difficult machines to drive. They look very small, and it's the small size that actually makes them a handful. Well, they're really agile. They're quite quick. They're really flighty, what we call flighty. And here's where it comes, right here. In tight, accelerates. Joe slides a little wide, and she runs down her and just takes the line away from her. And after completing this pass, she would never be headed again except for victory lane. In fact, our Mike Anson caught up with her in pit lane. Mike? Mercedes Gonzalez, your first heat this year. How was it? Oh, man, I felt so good. I've been working really hard this year, just trying to stay consistent and not make any mistakes and really just have fun out there, and it paid off tonight. Super light, main event action, eight laps of racing. Let's set the starting field for you. On the front row, it'll be Joe Price and Rick Marshall. Then our heat winners, Mercedes Gonzalez and Andrew Buck will be in row number two. Alan Yaros and Shannon Millen in row three. Row four is J.C. Dean and Troy Lindhorst. Alex Brionis, Casey Mears in row five. Then Greg George and John Savinsky in row six. Stacy Fay and Keith Ellers in row seven. Rennie Awana and Lance Gramet in row eight. Kane Smead and Bill Waltman in row number nine, and Mike Bentley and Mark Prince round out the 20 vehicle field. And if you thought you heard three female names, you certainly did. And uh, heat race winner Mercedes Gonzalez in row number two is got the best shot right now. Bill Rickey waves the green flag, and racing action is underway in the main event in super light competition. Now, Joe Price, remember, we've talked about him. If you've been with us before, he is a paraplegic, injured in an accident, non-racing accident, paralyzed from the waist down, does it all with hand control. He is in the lead. Mercedes Gonzalez is in second place, and then the 42 of uh, Andrew Buck bobbles just a little bit, but maintains third. So Price down through turn four, Mercedes right behind, as we've got all kinds of action going all over the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl race course. Right now, Andrew Buck loses a little contact with the front two. Yep. All right, Mercedes to the outside. Down into turn two. Well, that heat race win hasn't, uh, hasn't hurt her morale, and she's putting it right to him, isn't it? Look at this race. I'll tell you, you know, the one rap against Mercedes over the years has been whenever she's been pressured for the lead, she would have a tendency to make a mistake. So far, Walker, she hasn't had that happen. No, and I like her attitude on charging. I mean, she is just showing uh, Joe Price the front of her car everywhere she goes. Look at this. Whoa! Oh, and same mistake Casey made. Back in the heat race, Casey Mears, her teammate, made the same error trying to stuff it in on the inside and gets clipped off and will fall back about 12 positions. So Joe Price is still the leader. Andrew Buck is now second. And then Alan Yaros has moved up to third. Shannon Millen is fourth. Let's take a look and see what Mercedes did. She just got a little aggressive and stuffed it in there, and that allowed Joe Price to run on away with it. And the white flag is out. Joe Price, the paraplegic, does not have the use of his legs. It has never stopped him. He's never asked for any special favors as he goes right for it. And down into turn number two, he has taken every challenge and is now just two turns away from winning the main event. Joe Price in front of Andrew Buck closes the door nicely. And now it's down to one turn. Buck's going to have to come up with a miraculous move. It's not going to happen. It's going to be Joe Price. He's going to take the main event. Joe Price, your winner. Andrew Buck second. And there it is, the main event in Superlights at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. And we got them strung all over the track. <laughs> in fact, we've got eight Superlights on their sides in one way, shape, form, or another. We head down trackside with our announcer, Joe Benson. He's with Joe Price. 
For the folks that are watching and listening, Joe's in a wheelchair the rest of the time. You were in complete control in here tonight, weren't you? Oh, I don't know about that, but it was sure a lot of fun. <laughs> you ran a very smooth race all the way along. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it, everybody. Thanks. Jan's got a trophy for you here. You put that at home? <laughs> it was a long distance. <laughs> and a very happy winner in Superlight Competition, Joe Price. Stay with us. Heat number two of Grand National Sport Trucks when we come back. Marty Reed, Walker Evans, Mike Hansen back with you. Round four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. And there is Jerry Welchel. He has taken over the driver's seat of the Ford Rough Riders machine, formerly driven by Danny Thompson. Ask where Danny Thompson is. Well, today he is president of the organization. We talked earlier. Danny, let's look at the short term. What changes can we expect to see? Marty, I don't think there's going to really be any uh, significant short-term changes. I mean, the series is at its, at its height right now. We keep growing in spectators and growing in sponsorship, and I don't think we're not going to go around and change anything short-term. We're just going to keep going on with our program. We're going to be building it up a little bit more each time. I mean, the, the main thing that we have that's really exciting to me is we have 375,000 live attendees a year that come to watch our venues. I mean, trucks, Ford, Chevrolet, Dodges, Toyotas. I mean, all the marquees are here, and all the people that come watch them, they're truck people. You walk out in our parking lot, predominantly you see trucks and sport utility vehicles. So we're just going to keep keying on that. We like that. We like like that customer. All right, let's focus in on long term. What can we expect to see down the road? Well, it's something that we're really excited about. We got what we call a spec truck. Now, we're borrowing an idea from NASCAR that was so successful with them with limiting their cost of their vehicles. We're going to take a chassis. It's going to be spec built. It's going to come to the customer as a roller. Now, anybody can come by it. It's going to be a full-on stadium truck. I mean, the same quality that Cal Wells and the Toyota team runs or John Nelson and the Chevrolet team or Nye Frank and the Ford team. I mean, this is going to be a very high quality piece. It's going to be a $50,000 vehicle. It's going to come less a body and less an engine and less shock absorbers. The reason we say shock absorbers is it still leaves the teams some ingenuity to, to work on shocks. Rest of it, we're specking out so there's a lot of parity in here. Now, if you come in, Marty Reed, and you say, in 1996, I want to run a stadium truck, you're going to virtually have the same truck as Ivan Stewart or Roger Mears. So it's going to bring some real excitement in here, some more competitors, and now a truck's going to be 50000 rather than 250000 So it's something we're really excited about. Marty Reed, Walker Evans with you at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Las Vegas, Nevada is time now for heat race number two, Grand National Sport Trucks. And there is the pole sitter with the inversion from the results of heat race number one. Now let's take a look at the points. This is what has happened since heat race number one. Ricky Johnson has vaulted ahead of Ivan Stewart, 154 to 148. And Rod Millen has tied his Toyota teammate. Rob McCachron is fourth, just one point behind those two. Now, starting grid. It is Jerry Welchel and Ivan Stewart on the front row. Roger Mears Jr. alongside his dad, Roger Sr. In row three, Jimmy Johnson alongside Rob McCachron. And then in the back, Rick Johnson and heat race number one winner, Rod Millen. On board with Rod Millen. Look at the intense look on his face. Starter Bill Ricky has the green flag in his hands. He waves it and heat race number two is underway. Jerry Welchel. This is a one-off deal for him. He has to perform very well to maintain this ride. The Ford team is trying to work out a deal to bring Robbie Gordon back to the series. Ivan Stewart looking to the inside. Welchel sideways. Straightens it out long enough. Can he make the corner? Whoa, opens up a big door. But nobody can drive through it. Three wide. Oh, you know what place. happened the last time they went three wide and it almost ate him again. Look at it. Boy, and McCaffrey yep. nudges one of the Nissans. And now Ivan Stewart has got to play catch up with Jerry Welchel. So Welchel doing very well here after not doing so well in heat race number one. Down into turn number two. You can see the dirt flying off of the two Nissans. Junior and his father, Roger Mears Sr., going after each other. There's Jerry Welchel coming over. Oh, he gets a little top-heavy. Look at the contact. That is McCaffrey's board alongside with Rod Millen. They are running in the back of the pack. In fact, McCaffrey has moved all the way back to last. Oh, and Jimmy Johnson has gone over and is back on all fours, and we're underway. He ends up losing no more than one position in the deal. And while, meanwhile, 
up front. There you see Gary Welchel in the other Ford with Ivan Stewart in the Toyota. Now Stewart, remember, he did not finish. He raced number one after rolling over and breaking a suspension piece. He's now on the backside of Jerry Welchel and putting a lot of pressure on him. Well, I'll tell you right now, the boy is driving his heart out right now to hold the Iron Man off. And Iron Man's not going to take any of that. He's coming right up there and he's working on him side by side. Fantastic racing. And it looks like it puts Ivan in the right spot for the 180. The Iron Man sets him up and takes the lead. Stewart in front of Jerry Welchel. Third place Whoa. is Roger Mears Sr. You're getting a little excited here. I'll tell you right now, Ivan was a little excited himself. <laughs> Welchel's falling back quickly into the clutches of Roger Mears Sr. They come around turn four. Roger Mears closing quickly. And meanwhile, it has allowed Ivan Stewart to open up a huge lead. Let's set it for you. It's Ivan Stewart. Then second place, as you look out for Rod Millen, is Jerry Welchel. Third is Roger Sr. Junior is fourth. And you're on board with fifth place. That is Rod Millen. Then sixth place is Jimmy Johnson. Seventh is Ricky Johnson. And eighth is Rob McCaggren. And I'm stunned at McCaggren. I thought he would be doing a little bit better here in front of his home folks. Well, I thought he would, too. But, you know, here's what we're watching right here is Jerry Welchel. Welchel in a heavier weight vehicle he is not able to time the corners right. Roger with the experience is going to be taking over the second place spot here short. Three laps remaining. Look at the lead. There went Ivan Stewart through the shot. Here comes Roger Mears trying to look on the inside. He takes the position. That's experience right there. That's basically the way the Iron Man got around him, too. He rolled up, put himself in the right position. And here comes Roger Jr., but a little smoke from Mears. White flag is out for the Iron Man. Here comes Stewart around turn one. The big sweeper. He'll take this and double him up and flies it cleanly. In fact, he goes too deep. Luckily, he has a huge lead. He can afford that mistake. Could he be experimenting for the main, perhaps, Walker? I think he just bonsaied it and overshot it. <laughs> Spoken like a, a racer. There's the Mears gang. They're trying to reel in Ivan, but they're not going to do it. Roger Sr. giving it everything he can. Here comes the final turn. Ivan, the Iron Man, Stewart does it again. He raced number two. Belongs to him. It'll be Roger. Roger Mears, senior in second. Junior will cross the line in third. So that's the way it shapes up, and he raced number two. Let's make our way down to victory lane. Trackside announcer Joe Benson has our winner. The only way they can pass you is when you're sitting here in the winner's circle. Well, I tell you what, Joe, we, we screwed up in the first race, to be honest. A mistake of mine, get out in the mud and let them guys get up alongside of me. But that won't happen again. Uh, look out for this Toyota in the winner's circle tonight. You were following Jerry Welch at the beginning. He's a rookie in the trucks, more or less. Were you watching him for any mistake he made, or did you plan on passing him down here? Well, I, I really figured that we were going quicker than Jerry. Jerry's an excellent driver. He's just not familiar with the trucks and just kind of watching, picking my spot to get by him, and it worked out pretty well. Well, don't go anywhere. Super 1600 Main Event Action is coming up next from Las Vegas. Marty Reed, Walker Evans, and Mike Anson back with you at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. Let's show you highlight action from Super 1600. And keep your eye on the number one of Jerry Welchel. Right there, he gets spun around at the very first turn. Kevin Smith gets tangled up in there. And Welchel just can't get free until right at that moment. He would be at the back of the pack. Gary Gall would go on to win the heat race. Bill Gosher would be second. Jimmy Nichols would end up third. For Jerry Welchel, as you already know, he's wearing two uniforms tonight. Mike Anson caught up with him down in pit lane. Mike? <laughs> Jerry Welchel, a costume change. You just got out of your Grand National Sport Truck ride. Now you're going into your Super 1600. You tired? No, not yet. I don't think so. Uh, we're going to have an intermission, and then I'll, I'll race the buggy. Right after the buggy, though, I get right in the truck. So I'll have a good sweat going. I'm going to get to start on the front row, and I think I'm going to really learn a lesson in the next truck race. All right. Good luck out there. Costume change is nothing new to Vegas. No, no, and it's nothing new to me. I, I can handle it. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank you. 12 laps of main event action in Super 1600. Here's the Las Vegas Silver Bowl. Let's set the starting field for you. Corey Witherall and Jimmy Nichols will be on the front row. Bill Goshen and Gary Gall in row number two. Row three has Aaron Hawley and Eric Aris. Jerry Welchel, who has a three-race winning streak at stake alongside of Kevin Smith. 
Ed Herbst and Tommy Bradley will be in row five. Row six will be Robbie Brand and Tim Herbst. Steve Cocking and Troy Herbst will be in row seven. And T.J. Clark rounds out the 15-vehicle field. The green flag flies and we're underway. Remember, Jerry Welchel got spun out in the very first turn. It looks like, oh, and more contact. And Welchel was tied up in that. He is hooked in with another vehicle and finally breaks free, but loses a few positions. And then down in turn number two, we've got three vehicles climbing all over each other. That's Corey Witherell and Jimmy Nichols. They were our two front row contenders. They're now at the back of the pack. Aaron Hawley inherits the lead. There's Jimmy Nichols still hung up on the hydro barrier. We've also got another vehicle down in turn number three. That is Tim Herbst. There is Herbst trying to get off the barrier as well. Let's set the front for you. Number six is Aaron Hawley. He is the new leader. Right behind him is Gary Gall. And in third place is Kevin Smith. Fourth place is Jerry Welchel. And remember, Welchel has a three-race winning streak at stake. He is also going for his third consecutive season-long championship in Super 1600. No one has been more consistent in the winner's circle in Super 1600 than that man, Barry Welchel, in number one. Aaron Hawley has not been that consistent on the tour. This is a big opportunity for him, Walker. Well, it certainly is. He can just maintain. And now we got another record. Maybe this got a tangled. That was Troy Herbst in number 77. Oh, and just at the end there. And there's Aaron Hawley. Our leader goes over. So in two separate incidents, Aaron Hawley in one, our leader there is Troy Herbst. We've got a full course yellow, and we'll have to sort this one out to find out who's going to inherit the lead. Let's take a look at Aaron Hawley. I don't think he was on the gas far enough. He didn't make his complete jump over this double. Front end dug in, endowed the car. Watch what happens as he comes down, though. This is the most frightening moment as you watch the replay. Look at number four, Gary Gall, and watch where that front bumper strikes Hawley's car. Oof. Way in deep, Marty. We can tell you, though, Aaron Hawley is okay, and we're back ready to go racing one more time. Gary Gall finished fourth in the points championship last year. No one has won this year on Super 1600 competition except for the man in third place, Jerry Welchel. And Welchel trying to put that Toyota-powered machine back in front. He's got two guys to work his way around. Kevin Smith is the first one, and he's trying the inside line on him, coming down into turn number four. Gary Gall goes through first, Kevin Smith second, Jerry Welchel third. Which car's working the best, Walker? Well, I don't know. It's about a toss-up right now, but I can tell you right now, if they get it too excited, too eager, get up in there and touch those wheels, we're going to see a little bit more airborne and some more flips. Second place, Kevin Smith trying to go for the lead. They hook wheels. Look out, Jerry Welcher could be the man who wins in this. Gary Gall goes over. Kevin Smith has the lead. Jerry Welchel's in second. Bill Goshen's in third. Will it bring out a yellow? Yes, it does. Let's take a look and see what caused this accident. Open wheel cars, their tires get together, not being able to steer over the Triton barricade and upside down. Let's reset it for you now. It's Kevin Smith. will be coming into the bottom of your screen, number three. Right behind him, Jerry Welchel. It has come down to a one-lap, two-car shootout. White flag. Can Jerry Welch will finally be beaten? Remember, he has won three in a row. It's going to be interesting. I'll tell you, the fans are on their feet watching this one. Welch will Mr. Aggressive when it comes to Super 1600. Smith has to block the inside line. He cannot give Welch an inside line, and he does it. No. Welch has a chance. He's got oh, it. Pun it to the wide side. Now, Smith has one more turn to negotiate, and Smith will bring the three-race winning streak to an end. All he has to do is make this 180, and he's home free. Kevin Smith is going to win here at round number four, the midway point of the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Stadium Series Tour. Jerry Welchel is in second place. Bill Goshen will finish third. Let's take a look at Jerry Welchel's last-ditch effort to win this race. Sideways? Nope, I don't think so. That's not how you win a race. Let's go down to victory lane with Joe Benson. Have you got to think about winning races with three tires still inflated? I'll tell you what, this is the toughest race I've had to race in a long time. I got Jerry right behind me, and all those cars were flipping everywhere. And I'll tell you what, my turning brake went out, and I couldn't quite make this corner over here. I was afraid Jerry was going to slip by me, but I just kept it out in front. Stay with us when we come back. It'll be the Grand National Sport Truck main event. 
waiting for. Round four, the Silver Bowl Grand National Sport Truck main event. Twelve laps of fender banging excitement on the front row. It's going to be Jimmy Johnson in the Chevrolet against the Ford of Rob McCaffrey. Roger Mears Nissan against Rick Johnson's Chevrolet in row two. Then the Toyotas of Rod Millen and Ivan Stewart. And in row number four, Roger Mears Jr.'s Nissan alongside of Jerry Welchel in the Ford. So there is the starting grid. We are ready. Twelve laps of exciting racing. And the points battle is close. So, so close coming into this action. Right now, Ivan Stewart has the points lead by nine over his Toyota teammate, 169 to 160. Ivan over Rod Millen, and then third place is Rick Johnson with 157. And only 19 points separate the top five drivers. The green flag flies. We are underway. Jimmy Johnson has a big opportunity starting on the front row. Three abreast down the back straight away. Little bit of contact so yeah. far. Everybody makes it through. It is Jimmy Johnson, Rob McCaffrey, Roger Mears Sr., and Rod Millen. That's your top four. I know, no. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson goes all the way over. And Rob McCaffrey's the one that bumped him. We're going to have a full course yellow, and we did not finish the first lap, so we will re-rack it. Re -rack it. All right, let's take another look at it, see if we can see what happens. Boom, boom. See, he got hit. Well, he did get I hit. I saw him get hit. Spun him around, and it car hooked, and over he went. Well, we'll this, car goes, this car goes back in the front line. So the green flag flies, and the main event is underway. Down through turn number one. Great opportunity for Jimmy Johnson in the Chevrolet. Oh, three abreast. They're going to punch him, and he goes over. Now, Ron McCaffrey, no doubt about it, got into him, Walker. Yeah. This is a rerun just like before. And it is going to bring out, yes, another full course yellow here in Las Vegas. And there may be penalties handed out on this one. Well, I, you know, they got to make the left turn, so why are they, we got to get on the brakes here. Spoken like a driver. <laughs> Take us through it. <laughs> We're coming down the straightaway, and everybody knows you got to make the left turn. He starts into it, and it is bang, bang. It's just like... Uh, you guys. We're not bowling for dollars here. <laughs> well, let's reset this for you because rough driving has handed down a penalty to Rob McCachron, which just kills Ford's chances. Instead of being on the front row, he'll start in the very back. There is Jimmy Johnson, battered but not beaten. He gets his pole position back. Well, I still have to wonder how many times can he roll over and still maintain a calmness and cool collective driver that it takes to drive here. Well, we're going to find out because we're going to re-rack him and get ready to go racing one more time. Green flag flies once again. Jimmy Johnson, that is Roger Mears, and Rick Johnson oh, outside. Oh. Great out to his car. Roger Mears ducks on the inside, pulls his way through. Good, clean racing there. So now Rod Millen trying to take advantage also, and here comes Johnson back. Runs him to the hydro barrier. Rod Millen may be the one who wins in this battle. Millen in the Toyota. So it's Millen first in the Toyota. The Chevrolet of Jimmy Johnson second. Roger Mears Sr. in the Nissan third. And Rick Johnson's got a problem in fourth. His hood's flapping up into his face. And that can cause a black flag if that continues to happen. Watch. Right now, these guys are swapping positions back and forth for second place between Mears and Jimmy Johnson and Rod Millen is just walking away from everybody. Look at this. These guys are beating on each other. Well, that's, that's always Millen. what happens when you get a little war going in the back. The leader just has got a clean track and he just drives away. And again, you're looking at Millen, but the war is going on at second, third, and fourth. Here comes Roger Jr. trying to go on the outside of Jimmy Johnson. Johnson on the bicep. He's going to lose the position. Can he hold on to it? He's coming back strong. Drag race down into turn two. Jimmy Johnson, Roger Mears Jr. Johnson's going to hold the position. Well, he made a perfect turn. So now it's Roger Mears Sr. Jimmy Johnson second, Roger Jr. third. If he can hold that spot, don't go away. The Grand National Sport Truck finale will conclude it right after this. It's the Grand National Sport Truck main event. Las Vegas, the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl round number four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Championship Series. Right now, Rod Millen still out front and doing very well. Now, there's something to... we need to take notice. Look at where Rob McCachron is. I mean, he's right up here banging and working on his third spot already. Now, we're watching.
Watson. There's McCachron and Jimmy Johnson. The black flag flying again. You saw it there for Roger Mears Sr. And there are sparks on that break, but that's I don't, that's natural. That's break, uh, just a, a real hard break pad when brakes are applied. They all spark. Well, let's set this for you. Rob Millen is first. Roger Mears is second, but he's been black flag. Third is Jimmy Johnson. Fourth is Rob McCachron. Fifth is Roger Mears Jr. Sixth is Jerry Welchel. Seventh is Ivan Stewart. He's having a horrible race. And eighth is Rick Johnson. He just went a lap down. Huh. Yeah, he did. Something's wrong with his car. It's not even hardly running. And they give the black flag one more time inside McCachran, with Rod Millen. McCachron and uh, Jimmy are having a little bit of tussle again. Yeah, the battle for third place right now is really going after it. There you see it. Rick Johnson is out of the way. And Rick Johnson moves over nicely. Here comes Jimmy Johnson holding on to the position. Rod Millen still first. Roger Mears ignoring the black flag. I'm sure he's going to have a little bit of a conversation with uh, Mickey Thompson officials. Here it comes one more time, the black yeah. flag. Oh, and Rob McCaffrey gets up on the bicycle. Millen is running away with the event. Mears has got a comfortable second place, but they have black flagged him. But he will not acknowledge it. Not only did they black flag him, they put his number on a board and stuck it out. They darn near threw it in the cab with him. <laughs> so, so Rod Millen, a few more laps is going to do it for him. He's going to take over the points lead in his quest for three straight Grand National Sport Truck Driving Championships. They've given up there and they blow up throw the uh, black flag one more time at Roger Mears Sr. The battle, really the closest battle we've got is for third. You get an idea. There's the leader, Rod Millen. He has got total control of this race right now. Roger Mears will not stop. He'd rather fight this out in the boardroom later. And uh, Ricky Johnson's car has broke the shock absorbers off. It has no rear suspension. That's why he's just driving around the outside of the track. But, and it will be interesting to find out what in the world Roger did to get the black flag. Boy, they Here it is that again. In. One more time. Here's the battle for third. Rob McCaffrey gets around Jimmy Johnson. That's for third place. Should be second place if Roger Mears acknowledges the black flag. And I have a feeling MTEG officials will be setting him down for ignoring the black flag. Uh, certainly Roger is working for fuel right now because uh, whatever position he finishes, uh, they aren't going to award it to him. Rod Millen has got a comfortable lead, a huge lead. Roger Mears still running second on the race course, but continually, every lap, gets a black flag. On board with Millen right there. And boy, he's making it look so comfortable. Now we swing out, you get the view from the front. What a great comeback for Rob McCaffrey as we're watching the front view of uh, Rod Millen. In fact, Millen's about ready to put another lap on uh, Rick Johnson as he's just nursing it around. And Roger Mears is stopping on the race course. Mears has stopped on the race course. So now it will be Rod Millen taking the white flag right here. There is Mears, dead in the middle of the race course. Millen first, second place, Rob McCaffrey. And boy, does he need a good run here. Third place will be Jimmy Johnson. Fourth is the number six of Roger Mears Jr. And fifth is Jerry Welchel. So a half lap remains for Rod Millen. He'll make it two in a row. Remember, Ivan Stewart won here last year, has won three out of the five years that we've been coming here. And it will be two victories in a row for Rod Millen after a dismal start. He was seventh after the first round of racing, and now he's going to have the points lead. It is Rod Millen first. It'll be Rob McCachron second, and a good finish for Jimmy Johnson in third. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk to our winner in victory lane. Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. Round number four is now in the record books. And this is the move that opened the door for Rod Millen. While Jimmy Johnson and Roger Mears Sr. tangled, watch Millen as he slingshots past both of them. And from this point on the race course, it was his for the taking. So with the win, Rod Millen takes a 10-point lead in the driver's point standings over his Toyota teammate Ivan Stewart. Rob McCachron is third, Rick Johnson in fourth. Then rounding out the standings, Roger Mears, Roger Mears Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and Jerry Welshel. Now, the effects on the Manufacturers Championship, Toyota has a 396 to 348 lead over Ford. Let's go down to victory lane. 
How, and how come your truck was the only one that came out perfectly clean at the end with no dents? Well, because I drive a Toyota, I think. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but seriously, you know, the truck worked fabulous. I could place it where I wanted to and sort of run it at a comfortable pace, so I was real happy. And, uh, you know, I had the best tires out there, the, the BFG trails, and everything worked out just fabulous. And you just had to make sure you kept it perfectly in line all the way around and washed out for any refuse on the, cra on the uh, track. Exactly. You know, I saw some of the other guys having problems out there. Uh, you know, I got a great start. You know, the truck just was able to maneuver in and out of those other guys, and, you know, we stuck it to them tonight. This is going to help your championship point run quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly helped a lot from trailing at the beginning of the year. I, I would say we're up in the top two or three, which is great. Congratulations. Thank you. Enjoyed. Well, Rod, I got a clue for you. You are number one. Take our word for it. And as we take a look at some of the highlights of tonight's action, let's remind you that round number five, you'll be able to see it from Salt Lake City. We'll be on ESPN Tuesday, July 12th, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And if you want to join us for all the excitement, well, we'll be October 1st in Las Vegas one more time here at the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl. And then Saturday, October 8th, the big finale. That'll be at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. We hope to see you at one of those two locations. For Walker Evans, also Mike Anson down pit side, and a special thanks to Joe Benson at Victory Circle. I'm Marty Reed. We appreciate you joining us for round number four of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing Series. We'll see you next time we go off-road racing on ESPN. The Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Las Vegas event has been brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. This has been a presentation of Mars Incorporated in association with ESPN.